welcome back. Uh, the shift online has been a recent one many of us experienced over the last year, everything from uh, working at home to running live conferences from home. Uh, but for many car makers, the discussion about working online has been going on for several years. But now after the pandemic, many of them are looking at shifting uh, to developing vehicles online. Well, here to talk about the new online world and all of its implications, uh, I'm delighted to welcome Olivier Sapin, who's head of Katia for Dassault Systems, uh, who's going to join me on our virtual stage now. Olivier, thank you for being uh, with us. I remember just over a year ago, as we were going into the crisis, we were, we were talking, you and I, about everyone thinking about working from home and how long that would last. And now we're starting to come out of the pandemic, starting. Um, what, in your opinion, is the new normal going to look like from now? Hello, Peter. I'm so glad to be with you today. Uh, as you, as you uh, rightly uh, said, uh, we were just uh, maybe just one year ago together. Uh, to, to be really honest, I thought that one year later, we would be uh, uh, completely looking at uh, uh, COVID as, uh, as something behind us. And as you said, uh, it's, it's still, even if we uh, uh, clearly see uh, uh, things uh, improving, uh, you, uh, uh, we can see that the situation worldwide in many countries, you know, uh, I'm working at the system where we have uh, multiple offices in multiple countries and we can see that the situation is critical uh, for many countries. And by the way, I would like to send uh, them a message to take care. Now, to your question, I think that uh, what we already uh, uh, discussed one year ago, and I remember we had this conversation with uh, uh, two executives from uh, Jaguar Land Rover and uh, 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 the CEO of Lightyear, um, is the, the fact that uh, progressively and uh, by anticipation, but also setting a new normal, um, the working methods has evolved so that, as you said, vehicle development is now more and more online, on the cloud. Um, uh, people work, can work from home or from the office or from multiple office locations around the world. But the way to work together is no longer in different silos, and uh, those different companies has, have adapted their methods uh, towards something which is really looking at uh, a, a single uh, version of truth. I mean, when they look at vehicle data, engine data, uh, body data, software, electronics, electrical, uh, they look at what we call uh, a virtual twin, uh, something that represents uh, the progress on where they are on the vehicle development, accessible for, by all people in the company. And it's not just about experts, you know, even the, the CEO of the company, the managers, the program leaders, they all want to access this, the same kind of information. And if you remember, you know, we, we had these two uh, uh, companies, GLR, uh, uh, well known obviously as a, a brand and a company working for so many years, and, and new, new startups. And the new startups somehow, they demonstrated that they, in fact, they started to work with this new, new working methods from day one. So somehow they, they, they really uh, initiate a, a new way of working, which is now maybe becoming a new normal progressively in the overall uh, industry. That's what is, what is changing. And so do you think there's a lot to unpack in that answer? Do you think that the, the startups, the new companies coming into the space have found it easier and quicker to adapt to being online than maybe some of the large companies? Because the thing that I think has surprised a lot of people over the last year is how many large companies, which previously would have you know, dragged their feet on remote working when they absolutely had to, were suddenly able to pivot very quickly to it. Yeah, I mean, for the startup, you know, it's, it's easier because... Uh, they they have no legacy. They have no legacy system. They have no le legacy working methods. Uh, people join in a fresh uh, environment, uh, starting from a blank sheet of paper, and for them, adopting a, a, a new approach on a, on a platform is um, is is uh, very easy. You know, uh, Tesla has demonstrated uh, uh, the, the the way to go and has changed the industry forever, but. Uh, 
you know, we are working with so many uh, uh, startups at the moment. We mentioned Lightyear, but, uh, you know, you may have uh, heard about uh, Rivian, Canoe, uh, 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 Neo. Uh, both companies are truly gro global company, by the way. They, are, they, they, they start from a, a small scale, but they, they already start being global companies. Uh, they start also uh, designing vehicles which are from day one uh, the sustainable, uh, mostly uh, electric, um, autonomous as 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 much as possible. Um, so uh, for this company, the change has been very easy, and it, it has been the case from day one. For the traditional company, uh, it is uh, it is more difficult in terms of skills in terms of uh, environment, but they totally understand the value of getting to this new approach. And do you, do you think that, you know, in time, all the big companies will sort of gradually slip back to where they were before and people will be in more and actually, even though they say you can work remotely, in reality, most people will be in most of the time. Or do you think we've seen a, a permanent change in the mindset because of this? I think it's a, it's a, I think it's a permanent change, uh, but I, I don't think that we, I mean people will adopt a complete new way of uh, of uh, for example employees working only from home. I, I think it does not make sense. Uh, you still have the the need at some point of time to gather people in one place, uh, motivate them, get the enthusiasm. Ex but I think it, the it, the situation is going to be in between. Uh, what is really cool today is that the new working method allow um, any of the um, options, whether you are fully working at home or at the office or in an hybrid way. So I, I guess no, nothing will replace the, the human relationship, the connection, the relationship. But the fact that the new working method online on, the, on, on one platform uh, on the cloud uh, will offer the flexibility to do it from home, from the office, or anywhere. That's that's what is uh, really changing. And what does that what does that actually mean for things like vehicle design, engineering projects? Actually, being able to work all remotely on the same project does it just mean that you don't have to get the train or drive in in the morning? Or are there are there more fundamental changes that it brings? Uh, there is a fundamental changing in the in the in the efficiency. Uh, on which you are developing uh, uh, a new vehicles uh, experience and technology. Uh, you know, as, as you introduced at the beginning, I'm in charge of CATIA uh, at the SO system. And for, for more than 40 years, we have been partnering with the auto sector uh, to make sure that all what they do in terms of uh, designing mechanical parts, electrical harness, uh, um, and now software, electronics, uh, is designed in a virtual environment. But um, you, people are in so many places globally that they need to get the right performance and they need to make sure that everything they do uh, is managed with the, the new complexity of vehicles. I, I take one pragmatic example. If you think about one software engineer working on a new piece of code that will be upgraded by, by the you and me on your car. Um, you know, you have to design, test, validate that the piece of software is actually working on the configuration of the car you bought. If not, you're going to have huge problem in terms of quality, uh, software bugs and so on. So the, the real transformation here is the transformation toward what we call systems. So it's not longer about uh, mechanical components or uh, software component, it's about systems, it's about looking at the holistic view uh, of uh, designing a, a complex vehicle, taking into account uh, all the, uh, the configuration, uh, the life cycle, to make sure that when you uh, uh, design um, a, a new experience for the consumer, everything is done so that you make it quicker, at less cost, and it's uh, quickly going to the to the to the final consumer. So it's a revolution. It's a game changer. And is that particularly important as cars get 
more and more electronics, more software in them, and particularly with EVs, there's a you know, huge amount of software in the vehicles. Is, is that one of the advantages of it? Yeah, I think the obviously um, electrification, uh, autonomous driving with more and more software in the car uh, bring the complexity to the next level. Also, the uh, you know, it's no longer about products. It's about experiences. Uh, that you you so you're gonna get a vehicle that's going to be uh, upgraded uh, on a regular basis. So the complexity is such that it's it's no longer than uh, than what we had to deal with before. And so this is why all this requires a platform approach. You know, we we uh, we have our own platform called 3D Experience, which is today adopted by most of the traditional car makers and startups. So. I told you about Tesla, Canoo, Rivian, but uh, also the big car makers like uh, 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 JLR, uh, uh, Renault, uh, Toyota, uh, they, they, they all adopted the platform because they feel like, uh, because of the, the rising complexity, because of the challenge of moving from product to experience, they need to have a platform approach. And if all the startups uh, who have obviously been doing this platform approach suddenly see all the big OEMs also taking this platform approach. Doesn't that mean that actually they're going to get less competitive by comparison? That the OEMs are going to be able to catch up with the startups by doing this as well. Well, no. It's, in fact, uh, Peter, that's a really good question. In fact, it's the opposite uh, because the the platform helps them to differentiate. You know, uh, the the platform is a way to get the knowledge and the know-how of the company uh, within something that is uh, reusable for all the employees. So this is the capacity, you know, if you if you visit a, a one car maker or supplier today, you enter into the office, you find a great engineer first who have uh, the knowledge in their brain, uh, you find a lot of uh, PowerPoint on the wall uh, explaining the latest vehicle, and, but you know, if you want to capture it, you need a platform. And so the platform is going to, to be the way for uh, car makers to differentiate themselves. And you've obviously seen, you know, up close and personal, many of the big car makers try to do this, try to move to online systems and particularly try to embrace software. Um, talk a little bit about some of the challenges you've seen them face while trying to do that. Uh, well, it's uh, it's uh, there is a big challenge because for sure uh, their workforce is mainly about um, mechanical and uh, it's, it's it's not new. You know they 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 they, they thought about that a couple of years ago, but acquiring the skills, uh, uh, the expertise on, on doing that, it's 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 a first challenge. Uh, and, and for this, I guess you have seen that uh, not only it's about hiring skills, but it's about doing the right partnership with high tech company, internal company, because many of them want to uh, uh, go and, and work on, uh, on, uh, uh, on transportation mobility. I think it's also, I think what will help, you know, we talk about the new, the platform approach going online on the cloud. Uh, I think this will be also a way to attract new talents uh, uh, because uh, it's, going, it's going to be the way to federate uh, the different engineers, whatever their skills, whether it's mechanical, electrical or software, as we said, and it's going to help uh, because obviously uh, the people are coming from pure from software world uh, do not have the same working methods. But does this mean that actually the people joining from the software world uh, won't actually have to move uh, to the car makers headquarters? Because I know certainly if you're trying to attract someone from Silicon Valley and you're saying you can come and work for us, but by the way, you have to move to Detroit or Wolfsburg, then suddenly the pitch gets fractionally less attractive. Yeah, that's a challenge. Uh, but, you know, first of all, I think that uh, the... Uh, the automotive uh, offers, as we know, a great uh, challenge because we need to revolution everything. You know, uh, it's about uh, sustainable transportation. It's about electrification, autonomous driving. So I'm confident that uh, uh, 
uh, there will be a, a, a clear traction for, for new engineers to join. And in terms of location, uh, that's true that sometimes you, you have seen uh, the startup I was talking about working with us. Uh, they are mostly in the, on the West Coast. That's true. But others are in, in, the, in Detroit as well. If you consider Rivian, Rivian is a great partner of us. Uh, they, they started uh, based on uh, locating in, in Detroit. And they could, uh, they could show that uh, even there, you could find the right skills to work. And, uh, and the platform, again, will help to federate uh, the different skills and expertise, whatever, uh, wherever they are located. I should obviously add, I have nothing against you know, Detroit. So I, I love the city <laughs> and I've been tons of tons of times. Um, look, what is the logical uh, end point of this that actually location won't matter in the future? You know, you, how far could this go? Could you have people working on a car from opposite ends of the world who never met and never even had to come together in the same room? Uh, it could be. Uh, and and uh, we we have to make it work like this. Now again, uh, I, I I don't feel like uh, we're gonna have extreme cases. You know, at the end, uh, uh, you uh, when you work together, uh, even in the relationship between OEM and suppliers, and even our own relationship with partners, uh, we love so much uh, meeting physically at some point of time, building relationship, uh, uh, getting trust from each other. Uh, no, I think we need to take the best of both worlds. Uh, we need to uh, enable uh, a new relationship, new working method based on a platform approach online on the cloud. But uh, obviously, uh, I still think that uh, nothing will replace the, the, the human physics, physical interaction at the end to do, uh, to do business. Exactly. And particularly after a year of doing zoom and other online meetings uh you know some of us can't wait to get back either to the office or even to get on a plane and go and see other people which is something for those of us who lived in airport lounges before the pandemic something we never thought we'd say again um look what is the um what is the alternative um to this in terms of you know if car makers don't go down this route is is this going to become the way that everyone does the business automatically over the next few years or are there are there other ways of making it work uh, I think, you know, it's all in all, it's about competitiveness of each actor. Um, uh, so, um, and, and now it's about speed, you know, uh, so, so uh, the, the, the different actors are forced to change. Now, the, the speed on which they will go to this uh, new environment is, uh, is a question. But uh, this, I mean, uh, this is about competitiveness. So at the end, the one who are able to uh, change the approach, uh, getting a new environment for their uh, engineering workforce of the future, uh, adopting the platform approach, uh, these one are going to be the, the most competitive uh, in their business. And, and I think uh, at the end, they're going to they're gonna win. Uh, we'll still have people going to the uh, traditional way of working, uh, uh, maybe yes, but it's going to be harder for for them. Exactly. Now, look, you've obviously been preaching about this for some years now. Um, have you seen a, a noticeable change in everybody's mindset, particularly the big OEMs mindset during the pandemic? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we, uh, we did see that change uh, happening. And uh, you, you remember, you know, this testimony from uh, Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, actually, you know, even one year later, we even accelerated uh, the change that we were talking about one year ago. Uh, so I, 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 I see this in, uh, in many companies uh, and uh, even the ones which are not yet ready to do it, they have plans. So it is it's really encouraging. Uh, there is a, uh, obviously we, they have to deal also with the uh, current economic environment uh and and uh but uh, this I, for me this is the uh, uh this is the only way to go and to transform also this industry to a, a mobility service uh industry as well now you talked about partnerships earlier Dasa obviously has a partnership through the software republic with with Renault tell us in the last minute we have together a little bit about that 
yeah, yeah, you notice that, and I think you are interviewing uh, uh, Luca as well. So uh, I'm glad we spoke, we spoke uh, to him I, earlier this morning. Yeah, very good, very good. No, we are so happy because uh, uh, you know we obviously we have a very strong partnership today and in the future with um, uh, Renault uh, uh, Renault Group. Uh, this is amazing because there we are we are really uh, uh, getting exactly what we said. Make sure that not only uh, you know the uh, the several ten thousand engineers are working on our 3D expense platform, but now we want to move uh, uh, that to uh, the cloud, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, not only we we democratize the use of the platform so that we maximize the use of it across uh, the different. Uh, uh, Renault uh, um, location entity organization. Now, Software Republic uh, is is very interesting because uh, Renault is also betting on the fact that uh, uh, we can have uh, we can create a value network uh, to encourage several companies uh, coming from different domain to innovate on software for transportation and mobility, and that's. Uh, uh, that's really a first of a kind here, and uh, we, uh, as you have seen, we are uh, together with Renault and several uh, uh, companies coming from uh, different uh, uh, sectors. And I think this is really demonstrate that um, uh, true innovation will come getting out of the industry traditional silo. I mean, if you want to innovate about software in transportation and mobility. It's not just about looking at the traditional actor in your industry. It's about partnering with um, uh, high tech company, uh, internet company, uh, um, people who, uh, who are really uh, transforming the, the working method in environment like us. So this is why we join uh, that uh, that consortium uh, in order to you know uh, enable uh, new innovation with software. Uh, in this sector. Perfect. Well, breaking down the silos, a great note on which to finish. Uh, Olivier Sepin, Dassin, thank you very much. Um, after the break, we're going to be hearing about reducing the carbon footprint of batteries and battery recycling. That session is going to be hosted by motor industry commentator Amanda Stratton, who we're delighted to be welcoming back as a session moderator. Again, that starts at 1.45 UK time. Coming up this afternoon, we've got a panel on the shift to buying online, a deep dive into the battle of the sensors that are going to be used in self-driving cars. And of course, we'll be talking to the chief executive of Daimler, Ola Kalenius. That's coming up at four o'clock UK time. I'm going to be back later at 7.30 this evening for Meet the Journalists. Please do join us then. Still lots more to come before then. We'll see you after the break.